Hold on to your butts. Welcome back to Nerds Explain It All. I'm Zach. I'm Lance. And I'm Steven. And today we're going to be talking about Jurassic World, along with my favorite guest star, my wife, Michelle. (laughs) (laughs) Very smooth introduction, Steve. (laughs) Michelle, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks. (laughs) It is a pleasure to have you on again. Michelle is, I think, the second reigning behind me Jurassic Park, uh, um... Fan? No, I, I think yeah. I'm better. I'm a bigger Jurassic Park fan than you guys. Uh, how many times have you seen it? Countless times. I can't even count the times I've seen the first one. Yeah. Okay. Same here, except also with the second and third one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could just argue that he's a purist. Uh, no. No. <laughs> anyway, I, I do. I actually do want to get into that. So. Before we jump into Jurassic World, oh, by the way, it's gone crazy on the box office. It broke all kinds of records. It broke the worldwide opening weekend uh, with what, $500 million worldwide. And it broke the domestic box office record uh, for opening weekend at like $208 million, which beat the Avengers. Uh, and it's on a crazy pace. And, I mean, who saw this coming? Like, uh, I know everybody I, likes dinosaurs. I, yeah, I sure I did. did. That's my I did. I mean, right. let's, you know what, guys? Let's all talk over each other at the same time now. <laughs> Lance, what, what were you going to say? Uh, I, I did not see it coming at all. Like, I mean, I knew that people liked, you know, the first one. And outside of Steve, I didn't really know anybody that really liked the other two. Um, but I didn't really realize that it would have this big of a reaction in people. Like, you know, like when it first came out, because I, I didn't get to see it till you know, the Sunday of the, of the opening weekend. Mm. And, you know, when it first came out, most, like, you know, most of my, like, you know, my news feed and, like, my Twitter feed is just, like, just, just blowing up about people going to see uh, Jurassic World. I was like, shit, I didn't know people were really all that into this, but I guess they are. I mean, I like the first one. I've seen it countless times because it's a very excellent, excellent movie. But um, I didn't realize that it would just kind of, you know, trigger this reaction from people that they would just go to the theater and droves to see it. Yeah, I was not surprised. First of all, I've been touting this movie since we first learned about it, however long ago that was. I knew it was going to do killer. Now, I didn't expect it to be number one, but I knew it was going to be in the top five. Because, I mean, people waiting this, people have been waiting for this movie for 22 years. They have been? Yeah. Absolutely. This, they, this feels like a proper get, sequel to Jurassic right. Park. Yes, they did not get what they I wanted with that, Lost but... World and uh, the third one. The third one was yeah. more of a proper sequel than the first one, but people were burnt out uh, on Sam Goldblum. <laughs> and, uh, <right. laughs> no, incorrect. <laughs> uh, Jurassic Park came out in 1993. This is 22 years later. This feels like the proper sequel. Jurassic World feels like the proper sequel that we never got back uh, in the 90s. Now, I agree with that. I think we can all agree Jurassic Park is a classic. It is a one of the best movies of all time, and it's one of our favorite movies of all time. We all across the board agree on that. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And I think it was like the Star Wars of our generation. You know, how it just, people say it, they went into the theater in 1977, and it changed their life, and it blew their mind, and blah, 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 blah. For us, that was Jurassic Park. I saw this movie Park. in theaters. You didn't see Jurassic Park in theaters? I know I didn't. I was five. I was six, and my parents took me. Six, or six. <laughs> yeah, but your kids are big ner- Your parents were big, huge nerds, and they took you to see that kind of stuff. I remember. Like I saw it in theaters. There's a specific, there's a specific thing. If yeah, you were seven. <laughs> <laughs> my, my parents, I, I, I distinctly remember this conversation they had with me, because they, they actually talked to me before <laughs> going to see it, because they knew it was going to be sci-fi action violence. And basically what I told them was, I've seen King Kong eat people and Jaws eat people. I'm not really worried about dinosaurs. And I said, all right, well, let's go see it. Uh, I mean, I remember everything with Jurassic Park, like with the toys and I had like a sticker book and just dinosaurs. When you're a kid, you love dinosaurs. And this movie came out when we were kids. So it was just a perfect storm of stuff. And all that aside, it changed the way movies are made with CGI. You know, it, it for better or for worse. You know, <laughs> um, it just revolutionized special effects. That's right. I, I'm not sure that I didn't see this in theaters, but probably not. Because back then... You know, with with six people in my family, going to the movies was like a multi million dollar buyout. <laughs> That's true. And I, I wasn't I was an only child, so it was cheap to take me to a movie. Okay, so you know that I was like raised in a super sheltered environment. My mom is scared of everything. Yes. So I was never allowed to see anything and she she terrified me just talking about how scary everything was. 
So I don't know. I didn't see it. It was not in theaters. It was at my. It was at Rochelle's house. Mm. That um, I was at a friend's house and they decided they wanted to watch Jurassic Park. They know Rochelle. Oh no, Rochelle. I can't. Oh yeah, you know Rochelle. <laughs> we do. Oh, I was at Rochelle's house. They've and met. Her brother was like, "Oh, we're gonna watch Jurassic Park," and I was like, "Oh God, I can't watch that. It's too scary." You know, I knew it wasn't like a horror film, but I thought it was gonna be too much for me. And it was probably the year it came out or whatever, but it was on VHS. And then it was like a year later because VHS is back then took forever. You're right. That to took out. a long time. It probably was a year later. I mean, it had been out a long time. I, you know, right. and uh, so anyway, they decided to see it. I couldn't do anything about it because it was at their house. And so couldn't I was so nervous that I like, I peed like five times before it started. Like I just kept having to run to the bathroom because I was just so nervous about it. And of course was like instantly hooked and loved it because it's amazing. And then I graduated on to more and more things, and Stephen can tell you how obsessed with huh. everything. Now her horror. favorite movie is uh, Human Centipede. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no she, she, no, no. She loves uh, uh, fucked up shit. Uh, not that fucked up, but like not, serial not killer like shit. Not like that, yeah. She, she's a big fan of serial killers. Hmm. Not, not like a fan. Can you hey, stop making me sound she, psychotic? She's killed people. <laughs> have you seen she's the, killed people. Have you seen The Collector? No, no. Ah. but she collects people's pinkies after she murders them and buries them in the yard. <sighs> anyway, I, oh, yeah, I, and they know. made a sequel called this Collection. I, yes, I just, yes. Oh, I, I, I just, I, I have not seen them, but I was that sounded like something you guys might have seen based off that description. So I was. No, curious. we we we, we do I've like seen almost everything. Else. Like horror movies and stuff like that. I We're do. Big fans of that over here. Uh, Rose Red. Oh, <laughs> uh, hey, look! There's Stephen King doing pizzas. Love, we pizzas. love it pizzas. so much. Pre baby, we would be like, "This is what we're doing." This we're weekend. making a fucking fort. Do you like the Langoliers? No, hates I don't want to talk about I like the Langoliers. I love the Langoliers. Oh my god, it's so terrible. I've read was it. Stephen Weber was Stephen Weber in that? No, he terrible. was in the other. No, he was in the Shining. In the, TV. The, Shining. the Shining. And Wings. Yes. Which you know, oh, the Shining oh was so bad. How it was? I mean, especially like if you're going to compare anything to Kubrick, it's going to be t- the, well. The, the TV version was actually closer to the book. Yeah, I know, and that's why Stephen King wanted it Which done. Doesn't because... always make it better, clearly. So. Well, it doesn't, and you know, The Shining is one of those examples, the film of of a movie that's just as good as the book, even though it's completely different. Just like Jurassic Park. Well, yeah, there you go. Tying it all together. But The Lost World, though. The Lost World was one of the most disappointing movies ever. I mean, come on. Am I... Who who likes The Lost World? I'm going to change your word. It was a disappointing, maybe, sequel. But as a movie, I kind of like it. There's a lot of problems with it, but I find it makes it funny. Because you have the the inexplicable black daughter, (laughs) which, which is not like... Second Vivian, she is first Vivian. She is completely black. Okay. <laughs> she... <laughs> hey, sometimes that just happens. No, it, I mean, you have you have Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn in, in his serious phase. Like, oh, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. when he was in uh, the Psycho remake. Yep. <laughs> sure. Um, you know it. It's so boring. The last because I watched all these movies uh, last week in preparation for Jurassic World, and I had always preferred Jurassic Park three to the Lost World. Uh, probably because Sam Neill. Sam Neill is. I will agree with that. Yeah, definitely. He, he the plays, standard one, three, two. Yeah, there you go. But Indiana Jones style. Uh, it's perfect because <laughs> it's a Spielberg trilogy. Back to the Future. Um, uh, no, disagree on Back to the Future. Oh, shut. Well, that's different. Yeah. Different conversation. Different thing. The the problem with the Lost World is Jeff Goldblum's Ian Malcolm is a completely different character in it. He's not the wise cracking you know side character who you love. Yeah, he's like the because main he got character. bit by a fucking dinosaur or. <laughs> He, he, he's how did he get shit, hurt? And how did he get hurt anyway? A, build, a building fell on his head, okay? <laughs> yep. And he got chased by a T-Rex. And he, they Think you'll have that on the tour? Okay. <laughs> I mean, he, he's been through some serious shit. Um, he has post-traumatic stress disorder is what's happening. And he, he was already kind of neurotic, I guess. You know, he sees uh, pictures of islands and he flashes back to dinosaurs. I mean... He's been through some shit. No, That's there, why there is, you know what? That is a valid point. I will accept that argument. The, the experiences have changed him, and he's not the same character. But, That's why he's overprotective of his daughter, and um, but, a lot of, I've, and I've, I, I've written several papers on this. <laughs> he was the breakout character. Ian Malcolm was the breakout character of Jurassic Park, and that it's understandable why they picked him to be the star of the sequel. Plus, coming off Independence Day, it was just people probably thought it was a slam dunk. Now, the problem though is, is it doesn't feel anything like Jurassic Park. And Jurassic sure. Park 3 feels a lot more like it because, A, you have Sam Neill playing Alan Grant, and he's the same character. Like, you, you you feel like this is the same guy you saw in the first movie. And and what's and, and so much so that he's clinging to the bones. You know, he, he's 
you know, he at the beginning of that movie, he's in the. Um, he's giving me a lecture. Yeah, I love that. He's like, does, does he anyone like, have any questions? Everybody raises their hand, and he says, "Does anyone have any questions not related to Jurassic Park?" And, and, then, and, then, and not there's a few the Island Nublar. Yeah, and there's, and there's a few more out. hands still raised, and he's like, "Or the incident in San Diego, which I was not a part of." And then there's literally no one left that raises their hand. <laughs> I wonder, I wonder if Sam, if that's what happens to Sam Neil, like in real life, like if he went to like Comic Con. And he's like, does anyone have any questions not related to Jurassic Park? <laughs> uh, and Merlin, I have some problems with the final scene. <laughs> when, when Martin Short turns around, Isabella Rothalini, you and him. That's the end of magic. Uh, I love Merlin. That's a great movie. But mm-hmm. so, so I like Sam Neill better than Jeff Goldblum, probably. And that, that well, puts me over the edge. But also in The Lost World, there's just so many characters. There's like 20, 30 characters. Uh, the engine crew. Sure. Pete uh, Postlethwaite is there. For he's some great. Reason? He's a great character on that. The, the guy who wants to hunt the T Rex. But it's just that the, there people are getting picked off left and right by Velociraptors, this and that. And they're they're like red shirts. You know, they're so disposable because there's so yep. many people. You feel no investment. When people die. In Jurassic Park three, it's a lot smaller crew. It's got William H Macy, who's great. Tia Leone, who you know, take her or leave her. But uh, it's just a smaller crew. So when people start getting you know, picked off, it feels it has more impact. And there's a badass kid in it. In Jurassic Park 3. Oh, and shout out to our friends at the Inth cast who just did an episode on Jurassic Park. And they were talking about it. And they were piling crap on Jurassic Park 3. And I will defend Jurassic Park 3 as a decent movie and a hell of a lot better than The Lost World. So shout out to you guys. But it was good. It I mean, was it, good. It, it, I, I think it's a bad rap because it gets grouped in with The Lost World. Yeah, which yes, yes, I like, but is a bad movie. I think, the public, I like I think the public perception is 2 is better than 3. Because 2 was a lot more successful. It made a lot more money. And three just kind of came and went. Actually, that's Spiel- because it was following Jurassic Park and not Lost World. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But but uh, three was not directed by Spielberg. It was directed by Joe Johnston, who's the guy who directed The Rocketeer. <laughs> he also did uh, Jumanji and uh, Captain America. So you know, good it movies. Was brand new. <laughs> he also did uh, The Wolfman. So hey, hit or miss, right? Uh, <laughs> Wolfman. But- Jeez. Getting to Jurassic World, I think this feels like the movie we wanted because we returned to the island of the first movie. The, the yeah. setup of the first movie was you have this theme park and it doesn't work and it's and, and therefore the dinosaurs are going to overrun it. And of course, there's so many setups for a sequel that they never get to, like the Barbasol can. Everybody thought that was going to be the sequel. Spielberg thought that that's where the sequel was going to go. But Michael Crichton went and wrote his sequel novel and, and just went in a completely different direction. Well, I think that uh, some bad guy taking off Dinosaur embryos would make a weird sequel. <laughs> well, I don't know. I just it. I, I don't know where you're gonna go with it. I mean, because people always forget that coolant was only for what 36 hours, I think, in the Barbasol can. So yeah. if you, you wait longer than two days, it's it's useless anyway. But th- there was a setup for a sequel there. I felt, but it, they just pulled this other island out of their ass. And the reason they did it this way for the Lost World and Jurassic Park three was when Michael Crichton wrote the in the, in the real novel Jurassic Park, the island is is uh, bombed and destroyed at the end of the novel. So there are no more dinosaurs. So when he wrote his sequel novel, he had to make up a new island in order to continue the story. But the problem is, in the movies, they didn't do anything like that to the island. So why not just go back to the original Jurassic Park? You could have told the same stories for those two sequels on the original island. Dis- disagree. You disagree. Why? Because the Spinosaurus, which is badass, by the way. Be- I love the Spinosaurus. I think the reason why um, Lost World does not feel like... Jurassic Park is because they did it on purpose. Because it wasn't a failed park. It was more wild. It was like as if they went into nature with these dinosaurs. Um, yeah, but if you return to the original island just a few years later, it would be like that anyway. It makes sense. I mean, they wouldn't... I mean, they would have a second island. Why I mean, does it because, make sense? Because in the beginning of the first movie, they're transporting the raptor. Where are they transporting it from? That's true. That's a That's a valid point. I'll take that. But still, okay, Jurassic Park 3 then should have been on <laughs> Most quotable movie ever, by the way. Lance and I watched it last week before Jurassic World. Just that one guy. <laughs> Just uh-huh. Muldoon, clever girl. Every scene in Jurassic Park has quotable lines. It's such an iconic scene. Like, every single scene. Uh, uh-huh. So uh, <laughs> Exactly. And it's just Wayne, Wayne Knight at the height of his Seinfeld popularity. Where's Nedry? Check the vending machines. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot get Jurassic Park back online without Dennis Nedry. It is, it's, <laughs> hate this hacking crap. It's just every kid. It's Samuel Jackson before he was Samuel Jackson, you know, before he really hit it big with Pulp Fiction. No, no he was Samuel. No, I guess that is true. Yeah, right. so it was before. It was right before he just exploded. Uh, but I mean, yes, he's been around for a while. But I mean, people forget that he's in this movie, you know. So 
the bottom line is they, they they really they missed some opportunities with the sequels. And I you know the only problem with Jurassic Park three not being on the original island would be where the Spinosaurus come from. You know I really I actually really liked the Spinosaurus. Uh, I thought that was cool. I, I it was a, that was always a dinosaur. I thought it was cool because uh, Demetrodon was a was, it wasn't a dinosaur. It was like a pre dinosaur lizard, and it had the giant fin on its back. And then uh, and this was kind of like a mix between that and T Rex. And I always remember that it was a very striking image. I had a dinosaur book when I was a kid, and I had a picture of the Spinosaurus. And I said, like, "Man, that'd be awesome!" And it was, I was really excited to see it in Jurassic Park three. They even changed the logo, uh, the traditionally the T Rex. Uh, to the Spinosaurus in Jurassic Park 3, and the pterodactyls are in it, and that's... The, I feel like they did the pterodactyls better in Jurassic Park 3 than they did in Jurassic World, but... Uh, we'll get to that. We'll get into that. But anyway, I, I, <laughs> I, all that being said, Jurassic Park, it was a dead franchise. For better or for worse, the truth. It, it was played out. I mean, how many times are you going to go back to... The- <laughs> like, like I kept waiting for the Laura Dern Helmand movie. Now, that would have been freaking... <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> did, did, did it bother you that they didn't end up together in the end? Uh, Laura no, Dern I like that. Because they've been through some serious shit, Zach. <laughs> That's and, your answer to everything. And, no, no, because there were at this point their relationship, the 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 biggest thing they have in common is this experience they went through together. And there's only so much you if you if you spin that much, you don't want to remember that. You don't want to remember it's this. Not, none of that is true. Okay, it's true. I was no, a, I was no, a psychology no, 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 minor. I think no. I know what I'm doing here. Michelle. Oh boy. Whatever. I I mean, it's a little. It's a bummer. After a bit, after you go through something like that, you should be pretty damn bonded. Actually, I mean, how it's many true. people on the planet have had to run from dinosaurs uh, before? Seven, eight, how many you know are out now. there? Have... <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, you know, if, 20, she, if, if she if she hadn't married that guy that works for the government, they couldn't have saved him from the Raptors at the end of Jurassic Park three. Um, <laughs> anyway, let, let let's just get into it. Jurassic World. Overall, I loved it. Uh, I wouldn't say it was an A. Like I gave it a B plus on my standard summer movie blockbuster review thing that I do on Facebook. Uh, I gave it a B plus because I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun, but it it, it didn't. The first Jurassic Park was a very intelligent, very smart movie, and showed a lot of restraint. Um, this one did not. <laughs> this one, I think well, the, the weakest thing here is the characters being a lot of cartoon characters. What, what I I heard, and it's somewhat accurate, is that this is the uh, aliens to Jurassic Park's Alien, mm-hmm. where that was more of a, you know, like, there's shit out in the forest and it's going to get us, and this one's just like, fucking, it's going to eat you, and yeah, just, you have to ki- throw shit. Throw rockets and shit at it. Well, even that even that scene where the Irex is killing all the uh, it's D Rex. It's called the D Rex. It's the Indominus Rex. Yeah, but they call it the D Rex. Look on the freaking. It's, it's just just trust me. Yeah. Oh, I need call Bro- it the D Rex. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call it the Verizon Wireless Rex. Um, the Rex. I like yeah. that. Yeah. On this show, it should be known as the V Rex. There it is. I did like that the uh, the self parody of the commercialization of everything because it's so true. Uh, yeah. And I feel like that's why it has the kind of feel that it does. Because, I mean, that's the world that we live in now versus 1993. Mm-hmm. And so, for me, it worked. All of that worked. Yeah, and that's what separated it from the first ones. Because this is an operating park. you know. Right. And you see, like, the dinosaur balloons. And you and see... it's changed because Hammond's died. So, it's a profit machine. Right. It's not about, like, oh, wow, look at this the amazing scientific yeah. feat that we've done. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. and, and that's exactly how it would be if it was real. It's mm-hmm. exactly how it would be. The bat would die, and well, well yeah, and that's the other thing about it. it. Like, like, I wouldn't go to this park. Like, as cool as it as it is, well, you like, probably I couldn't would... afford it, Lance. <laughs> that's true, also. But also, like, the, the just me as a person would be like, I ain't going over there because I like I would predict something like you know what, like what happened in the uh, in the movie would happen in real life. I I'd be on like you know disaster scenario. I'm like I'm not going to get eaten by a dinosaur. Fuck that shit. Well, you, know, you might not go, but you would certainly send your two young sons there alone, right? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so, what did you, what did you think of that? Like, I, I know in I, the mean, tra- and I know in the trailer we're like, why why are these kids important? You know, and and tying it together like that was, I guess, the only way you could really do it to be well, there have in those to be kids. children in peril, or it can't be a Jurassic. Yeah, because then yeah. it's gonna. Yeah, I mean, it, that whole thing is unbelievable. Um, we we were talking uh-huh. before the show that you know we, that we believe are David we gonna... Wallace. Is is playing the same character David, from the office? He's actually David Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> and this, and this and his is marriage his is falling apart. Is his house. Who would else would have enough money to send their children to fucking Jurassic World? <laughs> no wonder Dunder Mifflin went under. Uh, you know what's interesting is Judy Greer plays the mom, mm-hmm. and she is Bryce Dallas Howard's sister, and they also played sisters in the In Night Shyamalan classic The Village, and 
Is she in those Verizon commercials? She is. What the, about the, the creepy the, uncle? The Verizon Wireless V Rex. Awesome. What what about the what about the creepy uncle from uh Star Trek? What's his name? The creepy uncle from Star Trek? Ron Howard's brother. Oh, the Clint Howard. Yeah. Clint Howard, that ugly motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and um Brechtel Howard really good in Zero Dark Thirty. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that I'm not Jessica Chastain song? Yeah. Yes, I love that. I would I, w- I got confused at near the end. I was like, I, don't, I can't tell who's who. <laughs> uh, you know, Bryce Dallas Howard, I thought she did a great job in this movie. And for, oh, yeah. the, for the first time, That's she's not right. killed a franchise. Because if you look, look, look back at her resume, uh, Spider-Man 3, Terminator Salvation, and, and, and The Village slash Lady in the Water. <laughs> so that is three franchises there that she was personally responsible for killing. So. Lady in the Water. I'm glad she... Yeah, I never even saw Lady in the Water. <laughs> the, the village was the breaking we point for me. saw half of it. We started it, and we were like, this is crap. <laughs> wow. You got, do you guys ever stop movies like that? No. Yeah. It never happens. No. <laughs> wow, that's, that's, that's strong, man. Um, yeah. yeah, I never stopped movies either. But anyway, so I thought, I think she did fine. Of course, she was playing a cliche, I'm a businesswoman, and blah, 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 okay, blah. Okay, okay. As the lady here, I feel like I need to speak up about Yes, please. Me. Give us your insight on this. Okay, so everybody is, like, losing their shit because we're just, we're, oh, my gosh, she's just such a stock character, the, like, uptight corporate lady, and, oh, my gosh, she's running around in stilettos and, oh, la, 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 feminism. Okay, so, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm, I am myself a feminist, of course, but I do not take exception to this. I mean, whatever. That's, there are women like that in the world, and it's fine. There are different kinds of people. Not everybody has to be a Joss Whedon woman in a movie. Joss or Joss Whedon you know? woman, I like that. It's true. <laughs> Yeah, they don't all have to be like everything all encompassing women. She doesn't have to be, you know. And so I just don't care that that's her character because that's her character. And why would she not be wearing high heels during this whole escapade? Because that's who she was, and she was at work when all the shit went down. Mm-hmm. It's either that or who so, barefoot. You know, you wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. who, who's going to run barefoot shoes. in the jungle? Absolutely, absolutely. Right? Hell no. So you know, whatever. I just thought it was so much. Before I even saw it, that was all my newsfeed was from all the various Mary Sue and Hello Giggle, whatever. Well, everything. Josh Whedon himself like called out because he saw like they released this the scene, trailer and he's yeah. like, "This is very sexy." What are you talking about, Josh Whedon? Like, watch the movie, man. I-, I feel like Avengers: Age of Ultron is way more sexist. People this. just didn't want the that. yeah. People just didn't want the you know whatever the cliche thing. The, but, but you know what? That's well, now, the Spielberg well, now movie. Just... It's because now that it's in the public consciousness, people are now looking for it some places when something's not yeah. there. I know, and it's just like, we can still have, whatever. I just thought the whole thing was dumb. Whatever. I, f- I feel what- like they did a very smart thing, though, with her and uh, Chris Pratt's character, where they had a pre-established relationship. You know, yeah, I like that, A too. failed date or whatever, and there's obviously some attraction there, and just they were just very different people, so it didn't go anywhere. Because it's not coming out of nowhere, because they didn't spend right. a lot of time on the characters in this movie. Absolutely yeah. not, absolutely and not. So, and, and obviously, that kind of, it suffers from that a little bit, but um, at, because they have that little bit of history that you know about, it mm-hmm. makes what all, happens between them sort of believable. It makes all the difference, because if they yeah. had, like just met, like, hey, I'm Owen, I work in your park, oh, you know, or some crap like but that. But on the other hand, it is Chris Pratt, so. You know, it's Chris, I love Chris Pratt in this, by the way. Every scene he's in stills the scene. I want him to play Indiana Jones now. I will see any movie with Chris Pratt. Uh-oh. I'm very well. This is why I wasn't surprised that it, it's the blockbuster that it is out there and that it broke all these records because I think he's partly responsible. He's such a huge deal. He's like a mega star. Yeah, he's one of the hottest names in Hollywood today. Was and so I saw know. this. I saw this article where it's talking about how Chris Pratt stole Ryan Reynolds' career. <laughs> <laughs> And it, and it's really true because they're both like from the, around the Canadian border, and they um, started a, a goofy, uh, 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 goofy show when they were younger, and then they had a uh, a, pro- a uh, engagement movie with a five year engagement and then a proposal, mm. and they and they had a superhero movie, and of course, except I find him basically insufferable. What? Yeah. So I mean, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and Chris Pratt is so much. Chris Pratt is awesome. Well, so. Ryan Reynolds was never on a CW drama like Chris Pratt. He was on Two uh, Two Guys and a Girl on Pizza Place. Well, what, what that was wasn't it? a drama. Was that on like Fox? Crappy sitcom, and, and that doesn't yeah. even kind of compare to and, Parks and Rec. Well, so. no, no, yeah, well, I'm yeah. talking about. Well, I was talking about Everwood. So. Everwood. Oh, yeah. I've been a Chris Pratt yeah. fan Parks, back in the day. Parks and Rec compares to Van Wilder. Um, <laughs> yeah, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> How they're playing some goofy, goofy. Obviously, there's. Well, but but you know the what show. the difference is? Uh, <coughs> as, opposed, is cool. as opposed to Green Lantern yeah. versus Guardians of the Galaxy, which is no contest. Uh, uh, Chris Pratt was never in something like R.I.P.D. Nor was he in X Men. X Men Origins Wolverine. 
the turning point was Green Lantern. Yeah. And we, we over here don't really mind that uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine. That is the worst X-Men film by far. Are you kidding? Yeah, I mean, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. I mean, it's, but it's I, didn't mean I don't like it. It's uh, Ryan Reynolds is probably the best part of it. I'll give you that. It, it's going to bring it back. Ryan Reynolds, seriously. Okay. <laughs> enough Ryan Reynolds. You wasted enough of our lives. Uh, Chris Pratt, is, he's awesome this way. Did the first shot of him, like the reveal, like with the sun, total Indiana Jones shot right there. You know it. Yeah, I know you know it. And it's coming. They're going to reboot Indiana Jones. It's inevitable. Chris Pratt's already friendly with Disney and Marvel and all that. He's he's a shoe in to wear the fedora. And I would be very excited to see him as Indiana Jones. Because you know it's going to happen. So might as well be him, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I guess. Hell, I have, think... have him beat Han Solo, too. Because he do, he delivered like the closest thing to a Han Solo line at the very end. Oh, I love uh, that line. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was brilliant. That was perfect. We should stick together for survival. <laughs> Like that shit. Like, like it wasn't delivered by him. That like that's something that should be like on an Old Spice commercial. But like, since he did it, it was cool. Well, he, he definitely elevated the material. Like you said, Michelle, the characters are a little two dimensional in here. So yeah. the the performances are really what need to elevate the characters. And I, I and I felt like he definitely did that. Now, Vincent D'Onofrio. What did you guys think of him in his whole role? Kingpin, Edgar. <laughs> He's still eager to me, Lance. <laughs> um, I saw again. I saw another article that talks about him like being a, a shapeshifter person. because he he he's like looks different in all his different roles. Yeah, he really does. Um, he he really gains and loses weight. Like he's like mm-hmm. a Christian Bale, a more heavy set Christian Bale, but still. And um, but <laughs> his character was very two dimensional. The 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 bad military I'm a bad guy. guy. I mean, I'm here to be a bad guy. For I've this got movie. the goatee. It's gonna be. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're, gonna, we're gonna train these suckers or. For Afghanistan, I'm like really, like, like literally really? from the first thirty like, seconds. I, you're I like, feel oh, like they, they could have, if they put a little bit more effort into it, they could have made him someone who, like, I feel like he his character knew that he was being a shithead. You know? <laughs> I, I feel like if they had made it into someone where he like was very like, we have to do this, we got to save lives, but he like just went too far. I think that would have been more, and yeah. maybe they, maybe maybe that's how it will be um, in the in the sequels. Um, with with BD Wong, the sequels. We'll what do you mean the sequels? Are you joking? <laughs> no, I, I made two hundred million dollars in three days. They're gonna make. A, there's gonna be a sequel. Well, yeah, no, yeah they've, they, they've, they've actually they like up. officially said it. Well, they? yeah, but they set it up with the BD Wong. Well, absolutely. So let's talk, let's they... talk about BD Wong, the only returning character, well, human character, and the most interesting oh. Oh. thing, oh. and and the fact that they didn't. Ex- I mean, I hope that in sequels that that's the thing because that's the most interesting part of any of this. The science. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, and, they and have how to did follow he get turned up. to the dark side? Well, you know, yeah. the character, uh, Henry Wu, is the character, and he was in one scene in the original Jurassic Park. Uh, so it's funny that he's the one they bring back because you know, mm-hmm. he, he's actually had a pretty decent career. I mean, he's been on Law & Order SVU. Uh, Us. He, he, <laughs> he was on, uh, you know, Jeff Globum was on Criminal Intent, and so was Vincent D'Onofrio. So this is mm-hmm. like Law & Order Jurassic Park. <laughs> Law & Order is the new boy. <laughs> but, uh, um... He in the book, his character ha- was a much bigger character, yeah. Uh, and he actually died in the first book. Hey, but so did Malcolm. Malcolm died in the first book too, but that didn't stop anyone. So there is more material there to be mined from his character. Like I don't think he necessarily went evil, quote unquote. I just think he got carried away with his research. That's and- that's what well, think think about it. Okay, if you if you think about him in the first one, he's like this bright eyed young scientist who's like mm-hmm. you're like very excited about what he does. Yeah, we, we so- just made Velociraptors. Yeah. <laughs> then who wouldn't be excited? Great idea. His, think about what happens to him. His creations kill people. He can't be hired anywhere anymore. He probably still works for Engine in some low capacity until they revive the dinosaur project and they call him back in. I mean, he's probably had a shitty couple of uh, decades. Okay, but that doesn't explain why he would make this monster of a dinosaur. Well, I thought, and I this thought is the scene, he was paid to. I thought the well, scene no. him and the new the new hand. What's the uh, Masrani is his name? Uh, the, yeah. the new Hammond. I, I think the scene between the two of them pretty was pretty good and helped explain well, that. Well, I mean, it explains it, it but it doesn't... It's clear, okay, because, Ola, you said you wanted it to be cooler and you wanted this and that. Okay, but common sense... I mean, this is a scientist we're talking about. He's not an idiot. He's, He's got to know... He's blinded by that cash. That dude was... You could yeah, have made something, like, anymore. big and cool and awesome without the intelligence of a raptor. Hello? It's just, like, that's a whole... I, I mean, if, if, if you... Wong was all about that money. That's why he did it. 
The, but in the, in the, but what I'm saying is he could have made what they were wanting and met those criteria. It's something big well, and awesome. I, I think cool. I think there's something we learn here where he might not have intended to be this monster, but you know the the message of the whole Jurassic Park is you cannot control nature. So even if they had programmed it to not be a killing machine, I mean, yeah, you're right. I, I mean, yeah, and the fact that it uses this intelligence, which is like super intelligence, to like cloak itself like yeah. hide its heat signature uh, that, i mean that's an that was actually that's powerful. actually from that's actually from the lost world novel there's a dinosaur that can do that like camouflage but like a chameleon so they actually they actually have some precedent they took that from the novel so uh, well they, they only used that they only used that one time though so it's kind of a waste right but, i mean they made this thing like eddie and tech and i mean it's just a cheat i, I understand <laughs> that these things get out of control and that's just making a tekken reference tekken 3 babe <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just he they made him too powerful, and that's why you had to have the Mosasaur at the end because right. nothing was going to take it down, and that's yeah. why I don't have a problem with it because well, you know I, I, I was I afraid. Get... I was afraid. Uh, I think when Chris Pratt said that thing's no dinosaur, I'm going to go down the lab and figure out what they did. I was like, oh my god, if they put human DNA in this, and that's why it's so smart. I'm not going to be pleased. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, that's no, I think it was obvious from the trailer. It was half, half I knew T Rex, was... half Raptor. I knew. Yeah. It was... Now I didn't yeah. know I was going to have like some weird chameleon frog shit. Frogs and tree frog or well, something. Well, you know, some frogs change Funnel sex fish. to sex and single sex environments. Dino DNA! <laughs> and Mr. DNA <laughs> made a reappearance. Way, yeah. Oh, Mr. DNA! Did, did he? Hello, John. Hello, John. Yeah. Hello, John. Hello, John. <laughs> Yeah, he was in he was in the visitors center just for yeah. just for saying uh, just like when you see the holographic dinosaurs and stuff out there like the Dilophosaurus, right. so Dilophosaurus. Well, you know, okay, and then the whole thing about how they raised this thing in captivity alone because it ate its sibling, mm -hmm. and like no one had the sense to realize this was a bad idea is also not something that I can buy. Okay, yeah. you, you think because... they would have like animal experts there to tell them these things? Of course they would. They would have behaviorists. They would have all kinds of. I mean, and really, do you need one? Do you not have common sense enough to know that that is a recipe for disaster? These people, no. Like, you know, they're corporate people. I mean, I, I, well, I just think I, I think that was the whole theme. Like these people are so caught up in the corporate BS. They, they see them as assets, you know, not You're as right, well, and they're not the... thinking of them as animals. Mm -hmm. um, I, and... I loved how that Chris Pratt established that, though, because he, you know, he worked in the Navy. I assume he was like a dolphin trainer or a <laughs> trainer. Yeah, that, that exists in the Navy. Yeah, dolphin yeah, I, that's not, that's, that's, that's true. I'm not, I'm not just bullshit. Freaking right. lasers. <laughs> lasers on the, that's the scene, that's Jurassic Park 5. Laser names <laughs> on the freaking heads. Um, I but that. I like how he established, like, oh, you, you've created a sociopath. The only relationship it has is with that crane. You know, so, I mean, it was a, it established why it was like a killing machine monster because all the other Jurassic Park movies, it was, hey, these are animals. They're dinosaurs. They're just doing what they do. But this mm -hmm. this was it's like, like a, a, a true be... villain monster, yes. you know? You're yeah. right. And and I like all that, too. I just can't believe that. And I mean, I know I shouldn't be talking about what's realistic with these movies, but it just everyone would know that. that I mean, you couldn't do that with a dog. You would also end up with a disaster of a dog. So I, it just. Well, to do that with a huge and, monster dinosaur, it's just and insane. Let's, let's talk about how it escaped for a second here. <laughs> let's that, please continue. They they have detailed description of what happened on the first park. Okay, they they're it, it doesn't even matter if you don't know that it's made of raptors. And, and they like built this. it higher. Didn't they yeah. say that that they like? Well, yeah. we had to add. But that's not the point. The point is, even if they like, oh my god, it it jumped out. They wouldn't like. Let's open the fucking gate. And uh, you know, just look, take a look around. It probably probably going to be nothing in there. I mean, they would they, you could search the outside area and the inside area. I mean, the whole thing is stupid. Well, uh, that, why didn't they just turn the tracker on immediately? I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? Like, let, let's go exactly. Let's, yeah, go, yeah, right. let's go inside. It's or you know what? Let's roll back the surveillance tape and see if it really did climb out. Why Instead don't they of, have a drone that they can just go send in there and yeah, look around? Or hover above it. Drone. I, yeah. think, I think they were all just panicking and making very bad decisions, but it, it was very contrived. Like, they wanted to establish the creature's intelligence, but I think they went a little too far with how the, they had to make the people so stupid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I, you're right. And, I mean, like, just the fact that it ripped out its tracker at some point is enough to establish how smart it is, honestly. Yeah. And uh, I, don't, I don't think it knew what it was. It just knew there was something in my body that they put there, and I'm taking it out. Like it wasn't like, oh, this thing's tracking me. I better remove it. It was, oh, what is this? Get it off me. I mean, they it, remember they what they said was like it doesn't feel it. it they remember they said, <laughs> what they said was yeah, it remembered it uh, being put in. So I don't know, but at any rate, it's a ridiculous animal. 
But I, I did it like uh, treated ridiculously. I liked how we saw it fight the uh, Ankles- Ankylosaurus. That was cool. Mm-hmm. Like we finally got to see like one of these other you know dinosaurs that we rarely get to see, but it's a dinosaur that people should like. Like I recognized it because I remember Ankylos from you know when I was into dinosaurs and stuff. Well, so that was cool. At the Museum of Natural Science, they had that Ankylosaurus sculpture. So like, was, yeah, that was always one of my favorite dinosaurs because of that. Yep. And it was a pretty good fight. It, 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 yeah, it gave us a taste of what like a fight between like you know uh, like you know a a dinosaur like that and a and a like Anglio or a Triceratops or a Stegosaurus would be like because we haven't yeah. gotten that's, yeah. that's something you, Zach you remarked about right I, I'm shocked in these movies because okay we all seen Fantasia right yes you know so the big the big thing in the dinosaur sequence is the T Rex versus the Stegosaurus you know and that's like that's like a famous confrontation or even a T Rex versus a Triceratops right and we haven't gotten that in these movies which is shocking to me. You know, you think at some point they would have, like, the classic dinosaur battle. Um, of course, you know, we get one at the end of this, but we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> but it, it was cool seeing the, the how the Ankylosaurus, you know, uses its tail and its armor. And, you know, it felt really bad for it when it died. Now, uh, speaking of feeling bad for things when they die. Oh. Oh, my God. I have the most issue with with freaking Morgana from uh, from Merlin, like, having the most vicious death. That's where I know her from. Zara, like, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Like she, she got the death worthy of like Nedry from the first yeah. movie. But she it's like, what did she do? She, she was just on her phone for too long, or, or what? Like, what? Well, why did she deserve that horrible death? You no, know? she, no, she had too much on her plate. Is what the, her big sin was. Like, she had to take care of these kids and be that fucking bitch's assistant. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> notice mean, we haven't talked about the kids at all. But we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But I mean, yeah, the no, no, no I, like, I want to complain was, about the kids. <laughs> okay, but like, no, that was that was seriously that was unnecessarily vicious. I mean, she gets she gets picked up in the air, she gets thrown in the air, caught by another dinosaur, then thrown into the water, picked up again by the like not by like their feet but like by like the beak not eating her and then like you know gets the, and then like finally gets like the mosasaurus to eat them both like what the fuck yeah it was it, but it was so absurd it was almost comical i wasn't laughing i felt sorry for the girl i didn't care about the people's death yeah, yeah, the they animal didn't, deaths they in this they never, movie like, were made very her sad like well, no, but like a- out of all the out of all the people that died like the people that died in this movie it was just like a regular it was just regular you know dinosaur just boom eat them but this one was like it was like extra attention was put on it yeah yes just gratuitous they just want to put something in there oh cool look at that well this. i think and michelle you might have been saying this like when the when the baby triceratops gets killed okay i like, oh, can't no. even talk about it I no, know. I can't even. Because like, I was so sad. I cried and cried, y'all. I, I because one of the one of the yeah. cute one of the cutest things I've ever seen in a movie is when the little kid hugs the baby Diplodocus. I was like, oh, that's oh so yeah, cute. I know. And it was just for a, a couple seconds, but it was it was adorable. Um, there were several things in this movie that were so emotional mm-hmm. that did not like I did not experience that in any of the previous Jurassic Park movies. Uh, that's because they gave all the emotions and stuff to the animals instead of the people. Exactly. Yeah. That's what gets you. Good call. And so, you know, it's the sad baby triceratops thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the whole T-Rex thing at the end, I was so upset. And right. the raptors, you know. Yeah, especially yeah. When, I think yeah. Uh, when, 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 the, when he's, like, making eye contact he with the raptor. he reconnects with yeah. that one and, and they're looking at each up. other. And then yeah. it gets, no, it's not blue. It's, it's like, I think it was Echo. And, and it gets blown. Oh, my gosh. I just was, like, I was a mess. I know. I was like, oh. <laughs> but the, you know, speaking of the Raptors, you know, the, what did you what did you think of the whole uh, Chris Pratt controlling the Raptors thing at, at the? Uh... I really liked that. I that really, cool. I thought that that was a, an interesting way to go. I think that it obviously made for a lot of the premise of the movie, the mm-hmm. whole and setting up the bad guy and the right. station, and which also seems like some dumb shit that would happen in real life. Exactly, uh, everything's got to be got that militarized. Didn't have total control either. Which was which I which I appreciate. I liked that. Yeah. Like if he had gone Absolutely. in there and had been like, "Oh yeah, I own these guys, and I can make them do whatever I want," it would be stupid and unrealistic. But it's right. the fact that no, they're still dangerous and terrible. Right. Yeah. But, they, they were almost going to kill him there before they dropped the yeah. Dropped the fence, yeah. So. And um, I liked all of that. I thought it was I, cool. I really liked how they turned, you know, on him and stuff. They started talking to the yes. Um, oh my god, that was so mm-hmm. neat. That was a great I mean, twist. I yeah. I can't believe that no one had already figured out that you know this was part raptor, but at least. It was cool to see that happen and and them communicating, and that's when it clicked for everybody else. And they had established, you know, Chris Pratt was the alpha, and so he gets supplanted by the yeah uh, the rest. Yeah. So it makes sense, you know. I, I want to talk about the end, but I, I guess we should talk about these stupid kids. Uh, these kids were annoying. <laughs> these these the, the little kid was like the little kid was like a Wesley Crusher. Like he's they, like what was the last name MacGuffin? <laughs> yeah, they might as well. MacGuffin kids. So so uh, uh, Gray was a little kid's name, 
And well, first of all, he's he's what is this super eight? He's looking at like a slides of the Lost World, nineteen twenty five. Not even slides. In his room. Yeah, like, uh, what, what Viewmaster? Viewmaster. Yeah, like I had one of those things. Like like uh, it's such a Spielberg thing, but it's not the eighties. So why would he keep be doing that? But he's also is he like autistic? Is he like Rain Man? Because he's like oh teeth. We need, I don't know. We need more teeth. We need uh, he's on the spectrum. I think a little bit. He didn't seem. I mean, he must be somewhere on the autism spectrum, but he didn't really seem like other than his just like focus and obsession with the dinosaurs. There was mm. no but other. But he's he's a little kid. I mean, I'll give him that. But his older brother, whose name is Zach, of course, complete douche. Yep. Like, like <laughs> I hate, I hate, of course, of course, right? No, but I hate this guy. This guy was such a creeper. Like they just, they spend the whole movie establishing that he doesn't care. It's like his girlfriend's like, "I love you." He says, oh, "I'll call you." And then they get to the island, and he's like checking out girls. And I did like how the little brother said, "Like, yeah, he co- totally called him out." And he's like, "Nothing's gonna happen. You just keep staring at him, or, or whatever." That. That, that was pretty funny. What but, do you think that's gonna do? Yeah, exactly. But he was just so unimpressed, you know, like, "Well, it's a dinosaur." Really. Whatever, man. I know, but it is, just... is it not really like how kids are today? I mean, I don't know. It's I, true. Don't I think that's why they made the um, the V Rex because like kids, kids like, like that, they, like, yeah, they needed people something wanted more and more and more, and not just kids, but, but everyone's just like, okay, yeah, we've seen dinosaurs, whatever. Well, I felt like he finally got to be won over uh, when they. When they saw the Mosasaurs, oh, yeah, because yeah. they're like started cheering and all that. I loved how the seats drop underneath the water. Oh like, that my is so gosh, awesome. that was bad. I was so excited. I almost jumped out of my seat. I'll tell you, no, I would give anything for no, that experience. No, no, to so remind cool. me of um, that that Exxon Mobile ride with Ellen and Bill <laughs> Nye at Disney World. <laughs> yes, like like what, yes. what it was is there was there was like this big screen and it was dinosaurs by the way. Yeah, yeah animatronic. And the whole audience moved like it was the whole audience went on That's the train it, it was, was amazing cool. it was uh, but like but we all had to sit in a room and it was just like brought to you by exxon mobile and exxon mobile was fucking everywhere yeah. <laughs> and ellen and bill and i were uh, neighbors it's yeah and, and alex Trebek was in it and it was just it was genius that uh, sounds amazing all it was that, that, that's the magic of disney right there <laughs> But uh, I would, t- Lance. You said you wouldn't go here. I would totally go to this park. Oh yeah, like, absolutely. I, like I would save up so much money and go. And I would go awesome. just for the margaritas. Yeah, with the, <laughs> so, Lance, tell tell us your favorite part of the movie. That was <laughs> my favorite part of the, of the movie was when like all the you know the ter- all the flying dinosaurs were coming because they weren't all pterodactyls. Like um, was they uh, it, like and the people are running away. This one dude who turned out to be it turned out to be Jimmy Buffett, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, like, yes. <laughs> Like, Have we not talked about Oh, my God, season? I didn't know his parts, that. His priorities were intact, and he took <laughs> both of his margaritas away with him. That was hilarious. If I didn't know better, I would have sworn on a stack of Bibles that that was my father. And when, as soon as I came home from the movie, I was like, hey, Dad, you're in Jurassic World. Is that the- <laughs> well, it's awesome <laughs> totally because something. they established all this, like, you know, her Starbucks over here, and there's a Margaritaville, which is Jamie Buffett's, you know, his, his yeah. restaurant bar thing. And so it, it just, it's perfect. And it's just the guy just – it's a great image of the guy saving his margaritas. <laughs> it's just like a split second flash of something, but yeah. it was so great and, and hilarious. That, those are my favorite moments. Like I said, the, the, the little baby Diplodocus getting hugged, the, the margarita, like those little, yeah. the, the little things. You know, showing how the park it would run when it runs. I, correctly. And we would talked about that when we were on our way home from the movie. Like to me, that is fascinating. I mm-hmm. I would. I would watch a movie that was just about how the park functions. Yeah, it's like, like a TV so show. It's like yeah, we're behind the scenes of Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, like the holog the holograms and everything inside. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just like it's a cool park. It's a really Absolutely. cool park. And, and it's cool, it's, but I'll see pictures. <laughs> I'll send you a postcard. <laughs> it's now, worth the risk. Now, can we talk about one cool thing that's a stupid thing, and it involves the kids? The okay. gyrosphere. I, I, okay. Oh well, okay. Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon was awesome. Okay, well, yes, that, that, that's great. That is exactly about... that's exactly the kind of bullshit safety. Oh, is this real? Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly mm-hmm. what you see. But yes, go ahead, Steve. It's it's completely absurd. Be- because you can't give the controls to a, anybody, especially a teenager. It would be guided. You would have to go with yes. like a person who yeah. is from the park who could actually drive you around. Yeah, because guess what? Guess what? A teenager or anyone's gonna do? They're like, gonna be a Let's dick fucking run like... into a tra- dinosaur. <laughs> Look, I'm bumping into the Ankylosaurus, and then fucking dead. You know. Well, the reason the reason they they could even get out of the enclosures, there's a hole in the gate, and and besides that, and if all the chaos had not been going on, I'm sure they would shut down the the pod if it strayed from the path. Because most people are going to worry about like getting in trouble. You know, like like a little kid's like, oh, we're gonna get, we're gonna go to jail. There Uh." was no path. It was just like we're gonna release you into a field, and you have like an hour, and you got to be back. What he's saying is they could be like there's, there's just probably, running into the ankles of a dinosaur. There's probably uh, a, an automatic return button that they can push, yeah. or if you're out too long. But other than that, you can just you know fucking see. Like I wonder if I can get that uh, uh, br- 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 
Brachiosaurus to step on me. I mean, <laughs> people are stupid. Well, I, I assume they get, you got to really? sign some kind of release form before you go to this park. So, yeah, but yeah. it's still stupid. I mean, who cares about? I agree. It's a complete. The, uh, it's a complete plot device. I dinosaurs. think it's a really cool thing that I would want to, to oh, do. Oh, absolutely. But, but it's I, completely again, unfeasible. Yeah. It would be. I think it would be more feasible if it was just if you could only be one at a time because you would be going with it with like a. Or if it was on a track. Time. Why yeah. not on a track? Well, well, track, well the first but, the first movie shows you why it doesn't work. If you're on a track, like, hey, where's the Lophosaurus? It's it. not here. Oh, there's no T Rex. You know, there, that's there, true. There, yeah, that's true. Any <gasps> dinosaurs on this uh, dinosaur tour? Uh, <laughs> line. But I mean, if you want to see, because if you're paying what? How much you think this park is? A thousand dollars a day? Oh yeah, probably more than yeah, that. Probably. If you're paying more that much, that. you want to see a damn dinosaur. And if you're in your, I'd Indian, say a trip this su- would cost ten thousand dollars. Yeah, that's yeah. an amazing experience. I mean, these what? are. Like, 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 if you're planning a trip for your, you know, family, family four, yeah, you're screwed. Ten thousand dollars. You want to go to college? You want to go to Jurassic World? I'm gonna go to Jurassic World. Uh, but if well, you're... you can learn things that you can't learn, and you can get a job there, maybe. I would intern at Jurassic World. Of course, you probably die. You wonder why there was a job opening. Yep. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you're in your little Ford Explorer going down this track at Jurassic Park, uh, you're not gonna see anything. So that's why I understand why they. And maybe in the universe of the movie, where like, well, we need to make sure we need to find a way to get them in, because it's like the San Diego Zoo, not the San Diego Zoo, but the there's the San Diego Zoo, and there's like the San Diego Wildlife Park, mm-hmm. where you, you go out in a jeep, you know, and you like go out into the quote unquote Sahara environment with like lions and tigers and no bears, but uh, you know, giraffes, yeah, giraffes and all kinds of stuff. So you're out there in the environment. But to you guys' point, there's a tour guide there; they're the one driving the car, <laughs> you know. Uh, so it's a, it's a lot more controlled. So, but it was just a plot. It was just a plot contrivance to get us to right. the yeah. original Jurassic Park Visitor Center, which was awesome. Oh, my God. Yes. Another yep. part where I cried. I was, like, right. so excited to see that when you see the banner on the floor and everything. Oh, the nostalgia. I was excited when I saw, like, the night vision thing. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my God, yes. Oh, my God, yes. That was amazing. All of it. I loved every single second. And, and, and you know that thing. was John Hammond's Jeep that they took. Yes, there was the one, uh, Jeep 29 or whatever. Yeah. yeah. We, yeah. We've been paying attention on the internet reaction to this. Uh, but the... Um, I was disappointed we didn't f- see the Barbasol can because I thought, you know, I was thinking because Barbasol is like sponsoring this. Didn't it like wash and, down a river or well, something? Well, it was underneath some mud. You know, here's what I was hoping. I was hoping like Chris Pratt or someone would be walking along, running from the dinosaur, and they trip on something, and it's the Barbasol can. It's like, what the hell is this? That would and be cool. And he throws it away and he runs. But I, I, I think the the whole the goggles and the visitor center and the banner, they, they kind of served – that purpose uh but it was so I, exciting yeah. but the barbasol just, can was such a big part of the first movie i just wanted to see it again but oh well uh, i really hadn't thought about the barbasol can in, uh, in a long 22 time 22 years so, <laughs> I, I think about that every but time i you're change. right that would have been neat <laughs> do you use barbasol no of course not but I, I use an electric razor but if i used a real razor i would totally use barbasol so uh, just because of that movie uh just but because of that okay how do they get the card to start though if it's been sitting there for 20 years okay okay okay, okay. okay, okay. They, they because they had, they had fixed up a car before. <laughs> yeah. It's all, let's not even, do we even have to talk about what all bullshit that is? It's, all it's, of it, every single second? It is the same logic of like, hey, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard and Chris Pratt went on a date once. That's why there's chemistry. And hey, these guys fixed a car once. So, you know what? But I, you know what? At least they had the presence of mind to put a line like that in there. As stupid as it is, like, hey, remember that time we fixed up that car? You know, but uh, I mean, a battery, I mean, gasoline, how do they even get that thing to work? The problem is, okay, the battery and the gasoline we is have, the part. Not really. If you had gasoline inside of a sealed container, How would it, it still evaporate. be sealed when it's open in well, the elements in a jungle, Steven? Steve, what, hap- what happens you to back... You screw the top on. You screw no, the top on. No, what I'm on. saying is that it would... Uh, time I, out, time I, out I, guys. Time out, time out. Back to the Future 3, the DeLorean still works after 100 years in the cave, right? So, huh? Yes, and you definitely wouldn't store it with gasoline, <laughs> but... Um, the, the, there's, there are problems. The batteries and gasoline you could have on hand and it would keep it. It's a maintenance shop, so they would have those on hand. Mm-hmm. The real pro- the part is anything that's rubber. Uh, oh, and, and tires, you, oh, yeah. yeah. The, any, anything that's rubber. Tires, maybe not so much. I'm just thinking more of like hosing and, and belts inside the engine. Okay. That Those weird deteriorate. The wiper blades. The wiper blades. Like, how the <laughs> fuck are they going to see <laughs> when it's raining? Well, the kids... You know, they, they got us to the visitor center, so I'll pretty much allow all their BS in the rest of the movie because I really enjoyed that sequence. Uh, I, I want to talk about this. Jake Johnson from New Girl and Let's Be Cops. Uh, oh my gosh, I loved his character because he wasn't he wasn't just like over the top comic relief guy. He was just like a normal dude. Uh, yes, and and I love first of all perfect. Jurassic Park T-shirt, brilliant. You know, yes. like three hundred dollars on eBay. 
And then the, yes. the part with the girl at the end. <laughs> at that the was end. hilarious. That was amazing. I mean, honestly, he was the best character in the whole movie. Yep. And he was just like some side guy. And that's, he wasn't like Nick Miller or whatever. He was like a separate yes, you know, he, character. He, he yeah, was, he was actually acting. He wasn't just in there. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And I love, yeah. He, he basically had Wash's workstation from uh, he did. Firefly. Yes, <laughs> I know. I love that. And Chris Freddy knocks over the dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> So you know we get we get to the end. Let's talk about the end. Um, so the, the the what what by the way what happened to all the crowd? I guess the fairies came. They all left or what? Yeah, yeah, they all got sent that to and, and Costa Rica. The final right? battle was hours after they had started the attack from the pterodactyls and pterodons. Yeah, yeah. So, so there there was there was time um, to to do that. <laughs> Although really twenty thousand people, I don't know about that. Yeah. But well, they, maybe they call for. You know, reinforcements or something, or, oh. or extra fairies or whatever. Um, so, you know, we get to this final battle here, and the I, the I, uh, the D, what do we call it? The V Rex is that what we're calling it? V Rex. Uh, the V Rex. The, the the official name is D Rex, but for the this podcast, we call it the V Rex. Uh, so it's it's still doing its thing. The Raptors have turned now. They're a gun against Chris Pratt and his crew. It's basically it comes down to it's very reminiscent of the original Jurassic Park. It comes down to Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard, and the two kids. They're running around. The Raptors are cornering them. We got the Irex over here, the Rex, but well, got the Rex over here. So uh, the kid, the little kid, uh, Gray starts having his Rain Man moment, as I thought of it. And he's like, "Oh, teeth of sixteen. Uh, we need more teeth." Blah, blah, blah. So th- this uh, a light bulb goes off in Bryce Dallas Howard's head, and she says, "Oh, I know what I'm going to do." And she she calls up uh, Jake Johnson and says, uh, "Open up Pin Nine. He's like, "Pin Nine, you out of your mind?" And I think we all knew what was coming. Uh, yep. The T Rex because we hadn't seen they did, they were smart about not revealing the T Rex to the end of the movie. T-Rex. So you have, you have a T-Rex? sweet. It was an awesome. It was it, it was it was amazing when you see the eyes come out right. of the fucking darkness and you're like, must go faster, must go faster. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you hear the iconic roar, like, roar you know. I, when you, when you, if you guys roar. ever see if you ever see dinosaurs and other things, I don't know, walking with dinosaurs or other movies or King Kong or whatever, and they don't sound like this. It's, it's, it sounds it's off. disappointing. Yeah, yeah, because this to me, like this is even more than how they look. This is how they sound. This Jurassic Park movie. So which, I just want to keep seeing more which, of these so we can get more of that. Briefly, can I talk about this one thing that I liked? Of course. Uh, back in BD Wong mentioned it. Like oh, you yeah. didn't want them to be real because because in between the first Jurassic Park and the Lost World and then Jurassic Park three, they discovered like uh, raptors kind of had feathers and shit, and so they they didn't do f- the. Like raptors probably ha- were full of feathers. They look like big ass chickens. I think since since then they've decided no. that's not the case. Yeah. Um, maybe, yeah. There are conflicting theories, Michelle. You're but the, correct. But and so and so in the third one they have like feathers at the top yeah, of their head. Yeah, they kind of right? quill. Like they're not quite feathers. Mm-hmm. They're quills. You know. But, but yeah, yeah. then they solved that problem with like you didn't want them to look real. You wanted them to look like you wanted them to look, and that's why they look like the raptor from the first ones, which See, I thought yeah. was very interesting detail they they put in there. Like in the, so. the movie predicting complaints and answering them within the movie. So well done there. Yeah. Anyways, um, okay. So, the T Rex comes out, and they have a battle. And well, no, before we get to the battle, though. Oh there, shit! Shit! Oh there, no! There is a Spinosaurus skeleton, and it's a reference to Jurassic Park three. And you know, as someone has been established already, I like Jurassic Park three. I like the Spinosaurus. I feel like it was kind of an F you to Jurassic Park three because no. it has it has the skeleton, and the T Rex comes and smashes through it. Because I know everybody was complaining, like, "Oh man, you just killed you killed the T Rex with the Spinosaurus. Good suck, man. T Rex. It wasn't the real T Rex on Jurassic Park. This was." The T Rex in this movie was the T Rex from the first Jurassic Park. Yeah, uh, the one in the other one from the Lost World Island, uh, Isla Sorna, was probably the baby or something like that, and that's why it was easily killed. But anyway, which, I, which I liked the reference, but I felt should I be insulted? I couldn't tell. No, it wasn't. Uh, I mean, I think it was just a thing that happened. We get to the final battle. T Rex shows up. It's like, oh, it's Godzilla's time. It's going down. So it's pretty exciting. And then you realize that, oh shit, the T-Rex is kind of outmatched here. <laughs> yeah. And that was yep. so upsetting and sad. Just, I'm like, did she just let that shit out just so it can die? Yes. I would be really upset. <laughs> really, run, really upset. Running from in her high heels, I might add. Yes. That, no, I'm sorry. That would not work. Okay. I don't know if any of y'all have ever tried to run in high heels. but So yeah, I, I, I felt bad for the, for the old T-Rex too. Uh, and I was like, how, how is this going to happen? And so, by the way, I, I guess we skipped over this part, but the the remaining three raptors they turn back to Chris Pratt, like mm-hmm. to him right yeah. to his side or whatever. I you know whatever who knows why, but they do, and they start attacking the uh, the V Rex and the V Rex man. It kind of brutally kills them. Like I felt bad for him. Like one of them gets roasted like on a yep. like, on a on a grill, and the other one just gets like 
Mongolian girl. Yeah, my go- yeah, Mongolian girl gets chewed All of off. that was very upsetting. Yeah, I was like, oh no, blue. Um, but when when uh, so so you don't know what ha- like you see a couple of them like die for real, and you don't know. I guess you don't know what happens to, to blue because they all have names: blue, Charlie, uh, Delta, Echo. Yep. Blue is the one at the end that makes. Yes, it- yes, blue. So sure. so the T Rex is about to you know get finished off by the V Rex, and yet what do we got? We got blue coming back, and I. You still my boy, Blue. You still my boy, Blue. Yeah. Seriously, yep. old school in the head. Come on. <laughs> but, uh, so they come and they, I guess, team up against the. And we, we've gone into full Godzilla mode at this point. So yeah. like, and then you're like, yes, and then like, oh shit, they're still both out match. This thing is fucking crazy. It was crazy. It was a crazy, and that's why I don't have a problem with the deep blue sea ending there. And so, what else was I, I, I think they were going to lead it to the Mosasaurus. Well, I did not think about, about that. that. Actually, I didn't see that coming. Although when they went to the when he knocked over that grate to the water, I said, "Oh, here we go." Now, that grate was that the only thing protecting like people standing on the. <laughs> yes. That was the first thing Stephen said. Was like, this could have happened to anyone like, like, at any time. Point in time. Like, hey, look, there's a seagull. It's like having a cigarette. Chomp. <laughs> but, you know, in in universe, Samuel L. Jackson could come to that park and get swallowed by the mosasaur. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that is true. Like, I, it wasn't even my bro- like my brother used to work at Jurassic Park. You know oh, god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! That's the best. <laughs> I want, I want to be in a sequel. <laughs> my brother used to work at Jurassic Park. Oh my god, it's hilarious, Steve. Um, but yes, that that is not safe. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, and um, but you know, it really <laughs> was the only way. Never explain it. And by the way, what's keeping the Mosasaur from like doing a free willy over whatever protection well, they I have? Well, I hope it gets out somehow. If it doesn't, uh-huh. it's going to starve to death. So, uh, like, they need to go in there and like release all the animals, or at least release the Mosasaur. Uh, but, but, uh, but you know, to that point, how did the T Rex get in the visitor center at the end of the first Jurassic Park? It doesn't matter because it was well, awesome. So, well, T Rexes can teleport, Zach. <laughs> Well, BD yeah, Long programming into the DNA. That's what T, that's what T stands knowledge. for, Teleport Rex. <laughs> teleport Rex. Wow. <laughs> what? what was that Whoopi Goldberg that's movie? That's terrifying sounding What, what was the Whoopi Goldberg it. movie with the T-Rex? Or was it called like Theodore Rex? It was like the, no you know what I'm that. talking about? Anybody? Dear God, I guys, wish I knew what you were talking about. It was like about. the 90s. Immediately. Talk amongst yourselves. Was it I'm bogus? Gonna, I'm going to look this up. Of Go ahead. Of the 90s. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I... Um, So. I said, talk amongst yourselves. I'm going <laughs> to look this up. <laughs> it wasn't We're Back, a dinosaur story, was it? No, that was a cartoon. Okay. Um, hold on. I'm, you know, I, 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 I've I seen this poster. I know it exists. Uh, da, 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 what's da. interesting is the new... Um, Theodore Rex, yes, 1995. Theodore? Oh, and my God. It, it, has a two, wow. it has a 2.4 rating on IMDb. <laughs> so, out of 10, right? So out, of, out of 10. That's terrible. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, and that's... That's the movie, you know, and then the we have our Anchorman moment where like Blue and the T Rex nod and understanding and Well, <laughs> I get that. I get that. Because the the Velociraptor makes sense. The Velociraptors are smart and he knows I can't take you on. So he's not gonna fight. But the T Rex, he has been living on she actually has been living on this island for twenty five years. Yeah. So she she knows what's up, and she knows. Also, she might just be tired. That was. Mm-hmm. Oh, she did tight. almost die. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I mean, like, fuck this. I'm leaving. It's a, that's a little silly, but you know, I. It was a moment between animals. I think we all enjoy that. Mm-hmm. And then, the, and then, of course, we already talked about the last line of you know. Well, the whole. Whatever. I don't. Dino Dino Mont, as you would call it. Dino Mont. Uh, yeah. Of of the. The declimax, anticlimax. The Ep- epilogue. Art. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's what I'm looking for. It, it was all silly. I mean, so you had like this sub sub super sub plot of the kid's parents getting divorced. <laughs> super sub plot. Like, like, yeah, like, really. like he mentioned it, and then you see like her crying outside of a and, divorce lawyer's office. Right. So like this shit's happened, but then well, the, the or it was were, happening as it was going on. And so I'm hoping... Which is why they sent them to Jurassic Park. Yeah. Jurassic World, I, yeah. But could they I'm, could I'm have ho- contrived any other reason that was less important? Yeah. Well, I did... Well, well the point is, is that... When they show up together, I, you see her crying, and she has the wedding ring on, that, and that's yes, a message. that's a message. stupid fucking reason to stay married, because guess what? In a month, <laughs> when he's back whoring around town... <laughs> hey, it's David Wallace we're talking about. He does not whore around. 
I mean, <laughs> their problems aren't going to go away just because their kid almost got eaten. So guess what? In a month, they're going to have to send them to fucking uh, <laughs> Cretaceous World. I just want to... To, to, <laughs> <laughs> to fucking get another divorce. Oh, and they're going to run out of money. I mean, it's just... No. Let's talk about what moving forward, okay? Not what we expect from sequels, but they actually... They had B.D. Wong going off in a helicopter with all the embryos. Right. I don't really know how they're going to do it because they, they – I hope they don't bring What him. can the next villain be? Okay, because – no, well, He has to be him. There's no other option. No, I don't mean person villain. I mean animal. Are we going to have more of these crazy – Well, it's, it's, uh, got, it's going to be militarized, militarized dinosaurs. I, I know yeah. that sounds so stupid, but I don't well, know. Well, what else do they do, though? I mean, seriously. Okay, because – okay. The, the bad guy in the first one, I mean, I'm talking about the animals here. We had T-Rex, and then we had raptors, raptors yeah. and then we had, you know, so it's like, what were they going to do? Then just the this? raptors, then really. Just, then just the raptors, but like, yeah. Uh, and so what were they going to do? Of course, for this one, they would have to do it like makes a sense. mix between a T-Rex sense. and a raptor and some other crap, but those were the two important things. And it makes sense for the movie, and it also makes sense, like, if that was real, if you're really trying to, you know, turn it up to 11, what would you do? That's your option. So, like, the next move, militarized dinosaurs, makes sense, too. Because what else are they going to do? Yep. I mean, it can't be like a... Well, they're never going to reopen up. these parks again. Like, no. Never going to be another Jurassic Park. Now, th- what they could do, and, and I think B.D. Wong, at least for this sequel, like the immediate sequel, that's, that's where they're going to go with it. I think that they absolutely have to do that because they set it up. Now, for... Because this made $200 million dollars... In three days. It's going to be a trilogy. There's going to be more. They're mm-hmm. just going to keep making these until they fizzle out. So mm-hmm. don't I forget. I think they're probably going to film two and three back to back. Oh, they're going to do it Pirates of the Caribbean style? It's a bad idea. Yeah. Well, I, 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 work, and, and they're, they're going to. great for the Matrix, too. And, oh, Back to the Future. Well, that, that is the exception that proves the rule. Oh, um, I, but I think um, they, um, it's good. It's like the second one is not going to be a satisfying ending, right? It's going to be sort of a half ending where it's like, well, we're not done yet, but we made a good start or some shit like that. <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> they, but don't forget, there's a whole other island out there they did not address at all. And you movie. know what? What the, my problem with these proposed sequels is, I'm the the militarized raptors or dinosaurs. I think is is exactly what's going to happen. But I don't want. I don't want to see that. No, I, don't I, care. I like. And you know what? This 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 sort of moved away from what I liked about the Jurassic Park movies, which is not. Mostly, it's not man versus man. There's always like a conflict there. Mm-hmm. It's man versus nature. Right. And, and 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 the first one was very much like that because like they thought they could control them and they could they they couldn't. That's the illusion. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and this one, it was very much like oh, we created this dinosaur and there's bad guys behind all this. And if there's militarized dinosaurs, that's it's just going to be man versus man. And what are they going to do? Like, we're going to militarize our dinosaurs. And there's going to be like a dinosaur fight and they're going to have guns and, and, and a fucking I agree. Uh, John Wu dove is going to fly John. by. And, and <laughs> Jurassic <laughs> slow motion. It's Jurassic, not a oh my God. Oh my God. That, that's probably what's going to be Jurassic War. I would just keep watching movies about people hiding in the jungle. Exactly. Well, and that's why Jurassic Park 3 is better than the Lost World because it's a small group of people having yeah. to fight yep. against the elements instead of like you know uh, because the the sequel to this sequel to Jurassic World what are they gonna call it Jurassic World two who the hell knows they've totally the numbering and titling has completely been thrown out the window with this series it doesn't make any sense I, I think they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna do like a live free and die hard type of thing where they just keep making up new names to Jurassic two world yeah uh, no <laughs> well hopefully with the next one they'll flush out the characters a little bit more and, and I think. Well, they'll be returning character. I mean, Chris Pratt's yeah. going to be there for sure. I assume Bryce Dallas Howard will come back. So uh, they got to bring back uh, David Wallace and, and f- follow up on his family. Uh, <laughs> the the um, should bring back Alex and Tim. That's who they should bring back. So well, uh, oh my god, what is, uh, yeah. what is a lot of people with Alex kids that they didn't know have you seen like those guys lately? Al- you know, Alex is pretty cute. I mean, she's about our age, <laughs> so I'm just saying. Yeah, uh, whatever. It would have been nice like if they'd months. made like a cameo at least. Yeah, I, I thought there would be at least one cameo. Well, there was the I didn't see it in the B. movie, Wong. but but well, there's B.D. Wong, yeah. But there there hey, was uh, Malcolm's book. Uh, we showed up I, in a couple I, of spots. I saw that in the trivia. Yeah. Uh, Zara was in on the train, and then uh, apparently uh, <clears throat> Jake Johnson's character had it on his desk. God creates dinosaurs. Do you want to see those guys back in any capacity in the sequel? Do you want to see Jeff Goldblum well, in the next movie? Let's let's talk about a rumor, which I don't know how much it's true. 
that's true. That Chris Pratt's character, Owen Grady, is the uh, snot nosed kid from the beginning that, of the Jurassic Park. That is just an internet no. theory. That's not a rumor. I hate all, all the fans got to connect all the dots. He's just a guy. I, yeah. Okay? Well, why, why, that's universal. That is George Lucas to the highest degree. That is Yoda knowing sense for Chewbacca. Be- that is Anakin building C three PO. I want it no would. part of it. No, no part because of it. it's not like Chris Pratt is a paleontologist. He's you know, was a Navy. You know what I'm saying? This this kid that was in the beginning of Jurassic Park was obviously into dinosaurs, mm-hmm. and I don't think that was the point of Chris Pratt. Actually, character. he was kind of a dick about dinosaurs. That doesn't look very scary. <laughs> yes, he was a dick. Wow, but he's a kid was that a sound clip? It would be nice if they brought back some of the old characters for the next one, especially if they're going to take it to some batshit level. Yeah, like just bring Jurassic everybody War. back. Like uh... I have an idea. Here we go. Feeny Wong's character. He has these embryos now. He needs a place to work on them. What's the best place to work on them from the Crying eyes of any government? North Korea. Isla Sorna. Oh, okay. Site yeah. B. <laughs> so, and they already have some sort of um, facilities, there. Yeah. facilities there. So he and, and he probably worked there before because, I mm. mean, that's where they made the dinosaurs. Going back and forth, yeah. So he's working there like a sort of a mad scientist type type of thing, cabinet of Dr. I, Island of Dr. Monroe. Like, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. whatever. And um, he, uh, so they need to go back. They need to go to the uh, Chris Pratt and and his team of uh, uh, Bishop needs to come back. Yeah. <laughs> Miscreants, um, you know, want to go. But who are going to be the children in peril in the next? One? I, you know, I, I know you brought that up before, Michelle, about there having to be kids. I feel like they, I think they feel like they have to have kids in here, and I wish they wouldn't. Uh, because I know, it's right? So they don't need that to make it like, oh, you Worldwide. care that there are people who are out there just because they're children. Of course not. You would be desperate to save anybody yeah. that was out lost with so, dinosaurs. They need to go back to the island, and they uh, come across this uh, black woman. Oh, uh, no, I know where you're going with this. <laughs> who has become lighter skinned over the years. Played, um, by, played by Zoe, Zoe Saldana, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's the girl from the uh, the, the second one. They, 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 we need someone that's been on the island. Yeah. And uh, they're not going to get any of the original uh, characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, actors but they get someone who plays her and it's perfect she knows the island she's been there before although that's a terrible idea to have her <laughs> to have that character back. well she was kind of annoying I, she wasn't my, I was she was, that was, what was even her point my to original to, thought to kill was, the raptor uh, with gymnastics upstairs. have jeff goldblum that part was fucking dope but have jeff goldblum <laughs> like come come out of uh like he's in an insane asylum and have to go break him out it's kind of like fucking fringe and, shit. <laughs> and um Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt's his son. Yeah. Oh my god. He's, oh my god. He's the That's black girl's like, twin brother. I think it's time to wrap up. <laughs> Who knows what they're going to do? They're going to do something because uh, it's inevitable because they made so much money. We're going to be seeing all Jurassic Park movies probably yep. every other year. I mean, so. this record's not going to be broken until December. I see Star Wars. How much money can one movie really make over a weekend? I don't know. Oh, really, all, all the, the money. money. All the money in the, the world. Money. Jurassic. I, I, if, if would you be surprised if Jurassic, if uh, Star Wars was like we made a fucking billion dollars in a weekend? <laughs> oh. <laughs> billion dollars? That's eight <laughs> times as much as Jurassic. No, do well, you no, know how? No, excited... I'm talking about worldwide. A billion dollars. Uh, worldwide, maybe. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Like it's, worldwide. I see, I see. It's the Star Wars sequel that we deserve. Okay? And not the one we need. Everybody right now. is like beside themselves, and I know I don't have to tell you this. When we saw the teaser, my mom cried. So you the have original. people who were adults when mm-hmm. Star Wars came out, who were teenagers, like her mom was like 19, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And uh, kids, you have people like us who grew up with Star Wars, people who were uh, kids and teenagers and adults when the prequels came out, because people still got into that then. Um, you have kids who have grown up since then. Like everyone who is alive wants to see a, a good <laughs> Star Wars movie. Mm hmm. If it's we true. can just pretend that Star those prequels Wars never is the happened. movie of the is is the movie of the century. Mm-hmm. Star Wars changed everything. Yep. Um, and made it's a the, way way bigger deal than Jurassic Park. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like obviously. I, I mean, Jurassic Park's amazing, but and it's not just some Star Wars like big budget thing like the Marvel movies or whatever that people really are into. It's 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 so much bigger than that. It's like, absolutely going to smash. Every I'm considering record. seeing it. At a midnight slash eight PM show, and we have a one year old. It's not I, even something that we ever want to do. I have never done that in my life. Yeah. I am so excited about this movie. No, we, no, we got to do it. Dress well, up. well, we got to we got to do it. We got to make it happen. So absolutely, I'll be there. Yeah, yeah. We might need you to babysit. Right, so. 
Is <laughs> <laughs> it? Man, Zach would love this. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, guys. I think that's gonna wrap it up for dress. Well, I, I think it's safe to say we all loved it. Um, yeah. Yep. You know, I, obviously there's some critiques. It's not as good as the original, but what is? I mean, Jurassic yeah. Park is one it's, of the greatest films of all time. So I mean, get, you know, uh, but for a sequel to Jurassic Park, 20 years after the fact, I think this is just what we needed. Uh, now I am worried about the sequels, but. Let's let's we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Anyways, that's gonna be it today for on Nerd Explain It All. If you want to follow us, you can uh, go to our Facebook page and make sure to like us, uh, Nerd uh, Nerd Sex Plane uh, or Nerds Explain <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> Didn't think of that one. Uh, we all have personal emails, which link to there. You can find it. We don't want to, have to say Guardian for Never or whatever the hell it is. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's gonna wrap us up this week. I'm Steven. I'm Zach. I'm Lance. I'm uh, Michelle. And uh, never spend all we don't break the news, but we do break it down. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'm ten and I'm homesick. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, you have to do that every show now. How long have you been planning that, Steve? <laughs> About three minutes. <laughs> Help control the pop population. Have your pets spayed and neutered. <laughs> 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 Actually, Velociraptors. <laughs>